Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Calix Sustainable Aquaculture Series. We hope you enjoyed our first two episodes, and it's great to have you back for more. In this series, we explore different aspects of aquaculture and define key characteristics of a more sustainable approach to aquaculture. Sustainable aquaculture is possible with the right mindset and innovative technologies. Today, we'll be looking at the effects of disease in aquaculture, why and how it has affected the shrimp industry quite seriously in the last decade. Aquaculture is replacing capture fisheries in supplying the world with dietary protein. In this third episode, we look more closely at the rapid and global proliferation of disease as a major threat to aquaculture production and dive deeper into the conditions that can increase the spread of disease within ponds. And this can also affect our environment. Finally, we'll explore a few of the solutions available to help control and manage disease in aquaculture. Let's start by having a closer look at the effect of shrimp disease on sustainability. Disease has become one of the major issues in aquaculture, causing significant loss of productivity with considerable environmental impacts, particularly shrimp farming. Financial losses due to disease can have profound effects on the aquaculture industry and for certain regions on the communities and the economy as a whole. As we saw in the first two episodes of our series, intensive and poor farm practices can be responsible for the rapid spread of pathogens and diseases within ponds. Transmission of diseases occurs within the pond, but also from the ponds to the waterways and natural habitats. Some of the most common shrimp diseases found in Asia are acute hepatopancreatic necrosis disease, or AHPND, also known as EMS, caused by bacteria. White spot syndrome virus, or WSSV, caused by virus. And enterocytozoan hepatopenae, or EHP, a fungal microsporidian. There are, of course, other diseases, such as white feces, yellow head disease, etc. Disease can decimate shrimp stocks or make a farmer's products unmarketable. The estimated financial loss over the last 20 years is over 23 billion US dollars. Although each type of disease presents different symptoms and different methods of prevention, all diseases can spell disaster in commercial shrimp farms. In yellow are the diseases for which Calix's solution AquaCal Plus can help. When looking at different prevention methods available, we see some common themes. Poor water and pond bottom quality and management. Reduction in stress due to extreme changes in parameters and reduction in water exchange. These are all areas where the use of AquaCal Plus, along with slight changes to the culture, can help. Okay, let's have a look at some of the common diseases in more detail. The photo you see on the left side of the screen shows the difference between a healthy shrimp and a shrimp with EMS. EMS stands for Early Mortality Syndrome, also known as Acute Hepatopancreatic Necrosis Disease, AHPND, and is a bacterial infection that causes high mortality in shrimp culture at about 30 days of culture. It is usually linked to poor water quality and algae blooms in the ponds. Other factors are high levels of phosphate and organic loading, too often overlooked by the farmer during pond preparation and stocking. For many farms, EMS is caused because many farms discharge their sludge into the same water source and they use this same water source 
to fill their ponds for new culture and thus spread this disease from farm to farm. What you see on the right here is a shrimp infected with white spot, a highly contagious viral infection that affects crustaceans such as shrimps and crabs. When found in high intensity production areas such as shrimp farms, white spot disease results in the rapid mortality of shrimps and has the potential to cause significant financial impact to the farmed shrimp industry. The disease is primarily spread through the movement of infected animals or contaminated water. Birds that feed on and move infected animals can spread the disease. Let's have a look now at EHP, an infection with Enterocytozoan hepatopenae. EHP infects the hepatopancreas of its host, causing hepatopancreatic microsporidiosis, HPM, a condition that has been associated with slow growth of the shrimp in aquaculture settings. Unlike other infectious disease agents that have caused economic losses in global shrimp aquaculture, EHP has proven more challenging because too little is still known about its life cycle and modes of transmission during the industrial shrimp production process. EHP is believed to be introduced via current methods of water exchange, even when water is sanitized using the standard hyperchlorite method. Spores are released that can reinfect the pond later on in the culture. Better control can be achieved by using chlorine dioxide as a sanitizer while limiting the water exchange as much as possible. This, coupled with good pond preparation and smart pond management, can help to reduce the impact of this parasite. In summary, there are many common factors that can trigger the spread of disease in shrimp cultures. One, higher stock densities and two, high concentrations of shrimp farms in certain areas. These are things that are unlikely to change, yet slight changes in farming practices can go a long way in alleviating the impacts of disease on the farm's yield. Other factors include poor water quality, toxic sludge discharge, and excessive water exchange. These are things that can be addressed by adopting Calix AquaCal Plus protocols. Shrimp diseases are the shrimp farming industry's biggest concern. In Asia, diseases cost the shrimp industry billions of dollars annually. As we saw in this episode, there are numerous diseases that can manifest as external parasites, viral infections, bacterial infections or fungal infections. Disease coupled with the effect of ongoing and accumulated pollution in waterways and estuaries, can be catastrophic for shrimp farmers, causing severe economic losses. The most practical way to prevent disease and or reduce the losses they lead to is to implement proper farm management practices and reduce the stress on the shrimp. Shrimp disease treatment is not easy. Often, it is more complex than disease prevention. There is not one single solution that fixes all problems, but there are preventive measures that keep pathogens from filtering through shrimp ponds and that keep shrimp healthy. In future episodes, we'll have a look at what can be done to lessen the impact of waterway pollution using rehabilitation methods to enable ongoing and sustainable shrimp farming. In conclusion, although shrimp disease is the main challenge in shrimp culture, it can be reduced with good farm management practices and a strong biosecurity system can be reduced. With passion and the purpose of solving global challenges, Calix has developed AquaCal Plus, a water conditioner that safely works to reduce the likelihood of disease, improves productivity and ultimately your profitability. A more sustainable industry means aquaculture and shrimp farming can become a more efficient way of growing food and feed the protein needs 
of a growing human population. Sustainable aquaculture is possible with the right mindset and innovative technologies. Because, as we like to say here at Calix, there's only one Earth and it's already ours. Mars is for quitters. Thanks for your attention. We hope you found this video interesting and I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of this series on sustainable aquaculture. To find out how Calix can help or discover the benefits of AquaCal Plus for shrimp farming, visit our website www.calix.global. Thank you.